and welcome to the first program in our Towns of the County series, celebrating David City's 150th birthday. The Butler County Historical Society and the Horeshka Memorial Library are proud to present the series of 12 programs, and we are excited to kick things off with the first presentation, The History of Bellwood. Our speaker for the evening is Bob Bell Jr., the great-grandson of the town founder, J.D. Bell Sr. Bob has a wealth of knowledge and memories about the history of Bellwood, and we are honored to have him share them with us tonight. Please hold your questions until the end, and join me in welcoming Bob Bell Jr. first and I don't like that. <laughs> but uh, my wife is going to start our, our program off and her part will start, will last for 10 minutes and she's pretty good. I've timed her many times and she's right on, <laughs> she's right on the button. So Joyce, you go ahead. Well, excuse me. Let, let me I want to thank all you people for coming. There's way more people than what they expected or what I expected. But I have some of my family here. There's a, I have my two sons, uh, Jason and his wife Amy, and uh, Rodney is here also. And then we have my my sister and her husband, Chuck and Max are here. Uh, Joyce's brother, uh, nephew. And his wife from Kelmba, or from Columbus, uh, Rod Kelmba, uh, Ron, Ronnie Kelmba, and I'm um, forgetting somebody. Oh, my granddaughter. She came in late, but I'll find something for her to do. <laughs> and and uh, was that all? Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now Joyce is going to go ahead after I. I'll quit interrupting her get close. This is a brief summary of the history of Bellwood. It was written by Robert R. Bell and presented by him to the Colfax County Historical Society in Schuyler on September 12, 1988. The story of the beginning of Bellwood, Nebraska has to include some Bell family background because they were closely related. I always have fear of talking too much about the family and not enough about Bellwood. John Bell was born in 1800 in London, England, came to America, we believe in the early 1820s, landing at the port of New Orleans. He migrated north up the Mississippi and Ohio River valleys, settling at New Albany, Indiana, just across the river from Louisville, Kentucky, where he met his future wife, Sarah Chance. John and Sarah purchased land there on a farm a few miles southwest of town where they raised a large family and made their living growing garden goods and selling their produce in New Albany. John died in 1858 at the age of 58. His grave site has just recently been located on a timbered hill overlooking the land he tilled. In 1857, Jesse D. Vale moved to another farm a mile from the, his family to produce his own crop of potatoes. Young Jesse grew a bountiful crop of potatoes. So he built a large raft to hold the crop, then floated downstream to Memphis, where he sold both the raft and potatoes. In late 1859, he moved north to, Indi to Illinois, where he clerked in a store. Later, he started his own small store and then in about 1866, in Wool Hall, Henry County, Illinois, he built a large brick general store, which apparently was quite successful. Uh, 1850, Henry County history book states his set estate at 45,000. At Wool Hall, he met and raised Hattie 
married Hattie Derby, who came from New York. In 1872, at the urging of his doctors to make a much needed vacation, Jesse took the train to Columbus, Nebraska, where he was met by a friend who had come west a few years earlier and who had now lived about a mile west of the present town of Bellwood. They returned to the friend's farm by team and wagon, and the next morning, Jesse rode over the section that lay to the east. After looking the land over, he decided to purchase the section, which was done at the landfill of Julius A. Reed in Columbus on June 5, 1872. Jesse then returned to Woodhall and arranged with his brother-in-law, Charles Derby, to go west to start developing the land. He purchased a team of horses, a mower, rake, and a plow to do the work. In the fall of 1873, Jesse returned to Nebraska and arranged to have a house built on the south side of the section. He purchased hundreds of trees from a nursery in Bloomington, Illinois, which were planted around the entire section and both ways and in both ways on a half mile line. He also planted many trees and shrubs around the farmstead, acres of grapes, apples, and cherries. In 1920, inventory showed 50 variety of trees. On April 10th, 1878, Jesse D. Well, his wife Patty, and their daughter Lorena moved from Woodhall to the home in the Platte Valley. At this time, a new railroad, the Lincoln and Northwestern, was being surveyed to run from Lincoln to Yankton by way of Columbus. Jesse planned to start a town in the southeast quarter, so offered a right-of-way free to the railroad if they would com come through his section and build a depot. This was agreed on, and the first train arrived in February of 1880. The original town site of 19 blocks was surveyed in January, February, and March of 1880. A distinctive feature of the new town was the three parks down the middle of Main Street, which was planted to trees, many of which remain today over 100 years later. After the town was surveyed, Mary Finch, a local resident, proposed the town be named Bell's Woods after Mr. Bell and his great love for trees. It was decided to drop the S's and name the town Bellwood. It was then in 1880 that Bellwood established a post office. In 1881, Jesse built a two-story building which housed his general merchandise store on the first floor, and the second floor was designed for gatherings and was used for meetings, church, Sunday school, and social gatherings. At the peak time of business, Seven clerks were employed in the Bell store. A painting of this building by Terrence Stern is on display at the University of Nebraska Art Gallery. The first street lights in the business district were installed about 1890 and operated on a saddling gas generated in a plant in Bellwood. In 1900, a 110-volt DC generating plant was built for the business district and any homer who submitted <coughs> subscribed to it. It operated from dusk till 10.30 p.m. This plant burned down in 1915, and a new plant was built and operated until the early 1920s when the Iowa-Nebraska Power Company ran a high-voltage line into town. Lots in early Bellwood sold for $20 to $50 and the town grew rapidly. In 1883, a new addition of 22 blocks was surveyed and added to the town, and still later, a third addition was added. By 1890, the town was, population was over 400 and has remained fairly steady. A survey shows that in 1884, there was approximately 41 businesses operating in Bellwood. These consisted of grain and feed, lumber, brickyard, hardware, furniture, tin shop, implement, blacksmith, harness, general merchandise, dry goods, grocer, shoe store, millery, meat market, bakery, drug stores, doctors, 
barbers, stables, billiard halls, saloons, hotels, and banks. The most popular and largest hotel, the Bellwood Hotel, was built in 1888 and torn down in 1970. The Catholic Church of Bellwood was built in 1889. Prior to then, the St. Mary's Church at Luxembourg and St. Joseph's West served the Catholics of the area. The Methodist people first assembled in a school two miles west from 1876 to 1881 when they began to hold their services upstairs in the mail store. In 1885, a Methodist church building was built. Both congregations built new buildings in the 1960s. A Baptist church was built in 1888 and destroyed by fire in 1913. Then it was rebuilt. Bella's first school was a two-room building which started classes in 1880. A large two-story school building was built in 1890 and served the Bellwood area until the new modern brick school was built in 1964. A smaller building was built in 1926 to accommodate kindergarten, first and second grades. The same year, a gym was built using lumber made from the cottonwoods along the road west of the cemetery that Mr. Bell had planted in 1873. Bellwood is fortunate to be well situated between larger communities and to have had surface through highways. Other communities tucked away in the corner with only a highway spurs serving them have found it harder to survive. With reasonably new churches and a school with about 100 students, a strong full-service co-op, a big grocery store, and a state bank, which presently has an expansion program in progress, the continued survival of Bellwood seems assured. Thank you, Joyce. Um, Now re remember that this was written in '88, and so there's not some things are that we Joyce quoted in there that aren't true today. But remember that, that a lot of time has elapsed, and uh, a couple of mistakes I want to point out. Uh, I just, I'll just get on my horse and move. You just got to lean forward. <laughs> lean um, forward. Yeah. Thank you, Dina. Um, Joyce wrote that the, yeah, that the, huh? You got to be right on the mic. Yeah, I know. That the uh, gym was built from Conwood west of the cemetery. That's not right. Is cut east of the cemetery. There, there was uh, on the cemetery road right west of town. Gra Grandpa had a shelter belt for maybe a fourth or a third of the way, and and then from there on to the cemetery was all all cottonwood. Either a lot different, sir. Was, was a, a lot of cottonwoods there, and they were cut down, and that lumber was used to build the gymnasium. And any of you that remember that gymnasium, that was a, quite a masterpiece. And it, by the way, it was built by Jim Cooper. And Jim Cooper's uh, daughter was Mr. Fike's uh, wife there. I'm just going to say that. It's got to be right there. Okay. Mr. Young, Mr. Young was the carpenter. And uh, his daughter was... Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to make a mistake here. I'm not going to quote that. So one thing I want to talk about as mistakes here, folks. We, we're dealing on a lot of numbers here. And get rid of this interruption here and then we'll be okay. Um, what was my subject? Dealing with a lot of numbers. What? Dealing with a lot of numbers. Yeah, dealing with a lot of numbers. I, I, we, we've changed our speech here quite a bit in the last few days. We, 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 uh, 
originally had all the dates scattered all out during the speech, and, and I thought that was distracting. Dates are important. I don't expect you to remember very many of them. I don't, but I, I made a page and a half of just dates, and I'll give those to you pretty quick. If you if some of them ring your bell, and uh, you want to write them down, you go right ahead and do that. Now, uh, now, uh, in the past, I've, I've, I've been criticized. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta have a sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing about? Well, <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, it, it is. Uh, what was I talking about now? Why don't you start with the pictures? Uh, the pictures? Yeah. Well, uh, I wanted to make another. Uh, oh, uh, when you're dealing with a town like this or any longer sub subject, there's going to be confusion sometimes. And, and well, I've occasionally run across uh, where one place in the Bellwood History Book, it says this, I might say something different. And, and we've tried to make this as, as accurate as we can. I don't want to spread wrong rumors. So p please, you know, bear with us. Uh, I, I know we make a mistake once in a while, but we'll, we'll try to correct them if we know about them. Okay, now, jo you, this picture, Joyce? No, Bob, tell you, us a little bit about the family home. Okay, talk to the uh, family home. Now, in the, in the first part, it said that uh, Mr. Young, or Mr. Uh, The builder of the first house. Cooper. Huh? Cooper. 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 No, 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 the owner. Jesse Bell. Well, his son in law. Derby. Derby. Charlie Derby. Charlie Derby is was a brother in law to Jesse. Jesse married Charlie uh, sister and uh, he was very, he was a very close to Grandpa. He was only 30, uh, uh, low 20s, in fact. He was very close, and he, uh, he should, should maybe have gotten a lot of credit for things that happened in the Bellwood area over the years, but he did the job, did it very good. He later on became a hotel owner in Bellwood, and then one in David City. Uh, there's a picture right up on that wall over there of, of, of the Derby Hotel. So this is set right down by Henningson's. Um, <coughs> and then they moved out to Western Nebraska for a while, but he ended up coming back here. He ran for the sheriff of Butler County. He was sheriff for two different terms. He was a very active man and really did a great job. Okay, now we're gonna uh, Joyce gives me credit for having a, a pretty good memory. Now it's, it's failing now. I forget things, but she says my memory is better than my notes. <laughs> <laughs> and at first, I, I said we changed our story. The, the, I had 15, 18, 20 pages of notes, and I, I can't, was getting lost searching through, through the notes to find the points that I wanted to make up. And she said, why don't you just quit those, follow, follow Gina's program, her notes up here, and talk about the things that are up here. And, and, I, and I really, I do talk better about what's up here than I do with what's on notes. My grandpa, gave me a great amount of time devoted to history. 
He, his dad died when he was only 50 some years old. We got build, building this house right here. He got pneumonia and died. And uh, so Grandpa was the one, the main uh, person that carried on the bill program. And uh, he just, my Grandpa, uh, when, when I was in the Air Force, I came home for two weeks one time at Christmas, and I spent all two weeks at Grandpa's house. Two weeks. Just, he was just puffing me full of Bellwood history. And I'm, I'm the only one now who knows that. I'm, it's all up here. Not all of it, but a lot of it's written down. I have hundreds of pages of notes. And Joyce, she can tell you, she, she spent a lot of time going through drawers downstairs where I keep those things. And, uh, but in the end, it's the notes, or it's the memory that gives you the good stories. Okay, now, I, um, I, I want to back up just a little minute here if we could. This, the, the original house was this one story part of over here. That was the original house built in 80, in the 72 or three, I think this first article quoted this thing. And then in 89, 1889, Jesse, and this is where he got sick and died, but he built this whole two-story front part <coughs> right there. And uh, a lot of bedrooms upstairs. And then in 1916, he, he, he came in and put the second story on top of the original part. Okay, Gina. Uh, this is my grandpa and grandma, Grandpa Jesse. He, now, I, I might refer to him as Je Jesse, too. It was his dad that started the town. And this is his wife, Ada. And uh, Ada, Ada and her two sisters were, were, were born or bred in Canada. Grandma was born in Canada. That's where the ADA A -D -A came from, Canada. <laughs> <laughs> and then the second second girl, they had moved to down in uh, Utah, or uh, it wasn't Utah, it was the state. Nevada. Nevada. Palisade, Nevada. She, uh, she was born out there, and her name was Nellie Nevada. <laughs> Nellie Nevada McFall. And then Ruth, the, the third uh, child, was born in the United States. And by the way, her daughter is living in Beatrice today. And in, in the next month, she'll be 90, uh, 102 years old. 102 years old. Okay, Gina. Now, this this is the west side of Main Street. It's a very good picture. Now, I can't I see it good enough to, and I have those pictures in the back, and uh, some of the, if you turn it upside down on the back, I have labeled some of the buildings. And there are some buildings here that were, weren't used too much, or weren't used, uh, uh, and there were some that were used a lot. Now, I'm gonna talk about, for example, restaurants. There was one restaurant on the east, west side of Main Street, about halfway down the block. And one time it was the Peck's Confectionery, and then it was the Napier Drugstore, and then last it was uh, uh, Bud Garrison and his wife, Verla. And now they're all, I refer to all, uh, of course now I've changed my story some, but they're the, I refer to all three of those stores, but it's always one store. They're just different owners. But it, it was a, really the main hangout. Now this this one here, I think, is a Rich Wine's cream station. And Mr. and Mrs. Rich Wine ran that for years. Shipped a lot of cream out by train. And he's a, I think Garrison's is right along in here. Some of the people lived up on the upstairs and, and the the west side streets or street really block 
had way more popular stores than the east side. And not popular as far as business is concerned, popular as far as attend attendance is. It, it just, the west side was the place to be. And many of you, you any of you, I say many, and then I ask you, hey, have you ever, did you ever shop in Bellwood at, at the Carson grocery store? Anybody here at Carson? There's a few here. Carson's were long time attendants here at Bellwood. And the grocery store, I think there was 20 some years. And at one time they, they bought the meat market from one of the Stempers and merged it into their business and really had a good business. Okay. <coughs> this is the Bellwood Depot now. Uh, can't see it very good, but the freight department is at the back here. And uh, when, when that depot was taken down, the the back part, the freight part, would move out to Judd Nicolai's farm. And it stands out there today. You can go out there and see it. It's still out there. Now there's, there's the Bellwood Hotel. It was a uh, there were two main two hotels in Bellwood, the Bellwood Hotel and the uh, um, Dale Hotel. And you know why did they need a hotel? Well, there's a lot of stores in Bellwood. They didn't have cars. The only way they could get into town was a horseback, or that was too far down to Lincoln. So they always rode them up the train. And They'd come in on the train and uh, get here in the morning and uh, make their calls around to the stores that were dealing in their products. And uh, if they didn't get done, they'd stay overnight, eat their meals there at the hotel, and finish up the next day and go back out on the train. And uh, the Bellwood Hotel was the main one. Now, uh, the, the, uh, the Dale Hotel sat at the north end of the block, you know where the, where the banks are now? Right about to the north of them. And uh, and on the, on the pictures, you can see the roof of it above the bank building. <coughs> now that that, uh, that hotel uh, was moved later on. I, I did give you my dates and I need to do that real quick. But, but the, the the Der the uh, Dale Hotel was moved from from the location north of Banks down to just north of the Catholic <coughs> Church. Any, any of you know where where uh, Lou Morbone is? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, Louis Louis Morbone lives. Well, that was the hotel building, and uh, they had an addition on it after it was moved. But in those old days, they moved a lot of buildings. I, I, it was like they had big old steam engines or something. Like, but they were always moving buildings. <laughs> now, they're, they're just some of the spectators here. I, I want to make a comment. Is, is any of the Demuth family here? No? Demuth? Well, I, I want to mention Demuth for two reasons. One of them is uh, when uh, when the uh, uh, no, forgetting my names again. Anyway, there was a, a Demuth family down north in the, in the uh, uh, Marietta area, and I wanted to ask Mich Pardon? I wanted to ask Michelle if that was her family. Mickey DeMuth still lives down there. I don't know if he's part of that family. But at, at the time, DeMuth lived right south of town here, uh, uh, south of Belgium. And uh, in fact, I was on a threshing crew one year, and we, d we did the work, uh, did the threshing of the DeMuth place. Now, the one thing I wanted to mention is, is this last room here. Southeast room on the ground floor was the last room that I'm familiar with that
that was being occupied in the hotel. It was getting near the end. I was managing the co-op hardware store, and the girl who lived there was, was Josie Stegers. I don't know if the same Stegers family in, in David City or not, but she lived in that one room, and uh, she had a, a, a big uh, a, a light, a, a deep burner that put out light and heat, and it had a big five or six inch wick in it, and I stocked them at the hardware store. Just for her, she wanted to see when it, the wick wore out. Why she she gets word down to me that she needed a new wick, so I'd go down and put her put her wick in for her. Okay. I, I can't read that. What? Gazette. 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 That's a newspaper. Gazette. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know what the building is, but I I, didn't, I couldn't say see what the reading is. Okay. The Bellwood Gazette. The Bellwood Gazette was uh, owned by Mr. McGaffin. It was a, a, a paper that lasted for 50 years, and Mr. Gaffin spent all 50 years of that paper in that building right there, and it uh, lasted for. 50 years, it, and I had his, his uh, anniversary picture of all the Bellwood businessmen that day, that, that, that week, and there were uh, 1936. And uh, there's a, uh, Gina, do we have a picture in there of that? Of what? Of, of the 50 people? No, I'm sorry. Okay, okay that's, all, that's all right. You wouldn't be able to recognize him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they were not your best pals. <laughs> but they, they were very, very well-run paper. Uh, he, had, he had one this son or grandson that was in World War II, was a writer, wrote stories from, from the battlefields. And uh, the thing that's nice to me is that uh, Bev Kellenbaugh. Bev, Bev was a bear. She married Joyce's one of Joyce's brothers. They live. She lives in that house right now, today, tonight. Now, the next thing I want to mention here, and I don't know if there's a picture, but was the telephone. It was. Do you have Do you have a picture of the next building? Or no, do you want no, this no. one? I bet no, that's, that's the post office. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't you can you can leave that up if you want. It's it's the building. It's it sits right here. It's right next door, and it stands today. And the family lives in it, and it was run by the Seltzer family. Mr. Seltzer, he had the old switchboard. You know, you'd you'd ring your phone and hey Sally, oh, this is Susie. I want to talk to Pete. <laughs> you know, and, and they'd pull the plug, you know, put the plug in. Pete, you got a phone call. Well, that was the phone system for years. And Mr. Seltzer trained his daughter. And she, they say she was 10 or 12 years old. She, she could run that switchboard. <laughs> Should we go on? Yes. Okay. Joe Rose's first rural mail carrier from Bellwood. How would you like to deliver the horse on a 60 mile, 50 mile route on a horseback, on a trailer, in the winter time? Zero. It was, it was a pretty tough, tough job. Now this is the post office uh, in Bellwood, and not the first one, but one of the important ones. And uh, this, this was the main entrance door and this was just a big window here. And uh, you can see right here a little bit of a, a, a brick a, a addition. I'm going to talk about that for a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> the first post office, I'm not sure about all this. The, post, the first official post office was pa Patron, P-A-T-R-O-N. And it sat right north of where Jerry McDonald is. 
and Henry uh, Irv D. Ford used to live there for quite a while. And the, the patron building was on the east side of the model line. And there were some cottonwoods planted right in that area. I don't know why. But uh, that was the first official post office. And uh, soon after it was named patron, it became the Bellwood Post Office. And was soon moved, a different building was moved to town for, for it. Now, uh, I, I, the Cushes owned the post office. Uh, Mr. Cush owned the Cush garage. Well, I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit in a minute. But, he, but his wife also owned the post office. And later on in the year, she wanted to get out of the business and wanted to sell it. So I, I bought it. Joyce and I, bu Joyce and I bought it. And uh, when they built the new post office in Belgium, the government came to me and said, you're our postmaster. Or I'm not our postmaster. You own the post building, and we're going to build a new one. Do you want to be involved in that? And I said, no. <laughs> that, was, that was probably a good judgment, I think. <laughs> but, but anyway, uh, I, I had the building moved out to the farm where Rodney lived, the main J.D. Bell house, and a poured concrete floor, and, and had a house moving company uh, move it, and I kept the post office seat, sign up there, Bellwood Post Office. Later, I had to put, you had to put the zip on it, you know, nowadays. And, and uh, so it's Rodney's shop now, it's electric heated, <laughs> and uh, I need to say anything about a house about Rodney? Nope. No. Do you want to talk about the brick structure on the side? Okay, yeah. Uh, we had a bank bank fraud in Bellwood years ago, and I don't know if you have a picture of that, but uh, there was the Gould, the Gould, G-O-U-L-D family. There were three brothers, and they, they owned the bank at Bellwood at the time. It was called the Platte Valley Bank. And Mr. Gould, the, the uh, older brother, lived in Omaha, and the other two brothers lived in Bellwood. And uh, the one that lived in Omaha got doing something he wasn't supposed to, and he was falsifying notes and, and getting his loan accounts way up, and he got caught. And he had he did in Butler County Court. He did... Uh, <coughs> I think it was about 20, 20, 20, 20 some thousand dollars, 23,300 or something, on falsified notes. And he got, he got convicted for uh, 12 years of hard labor in the Bracketana Penitentiary, and he served those. And his two brothers were honest, and they, they opened the bank back up and kept it for just a year or two, and then sold it. And then that's when my family, and Grandpa died, and I call him Grandpa, he's really my great grandpa. I call him a lot, of, uh, call him a lot of times. But he, uh, he, he, uh, I think 1907, 1907, Hattie, Jesse's wife, Jesse the First, built a new bank in Bellwood. It was brick, and it's the one, it's the first brick bank in the corner of the north block where the bank is at the east side. Had that corner of the door. It, it, that's the first one of the brick buildings that was built there. And that's Nate, Nate the the banker in Bellwood, that's his office. And uh, so, the, so the boys, uh, Jesse and, and his brother Jasper, ran the bank then after mom bought that 
and built that bank in, in 2003. And they stayed there until 2017 when they sold the bank and it went to a, oh, Nebraska at that time passed a law that said that any uh, credit association in Nebraska can revert to a state bank and only. That's all they can do. So Bella did that. And that's when they ha Paul hired Paul Chandler and uh, he started the new Bellwood Bank of the Valley. That's when that started and the state law allowed that to be done. Now, I, I th was this Pete Rose here? Uh, that's Adeline Birch. Adeline Birch. Uh, I knew Adeline. In fact, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of a connection matter. There's a there's a, uh, a relationship here. Um, anyway, Mr. Fenstermaker was a farmer who lived in Bellwood, and uh, he, had, he they had connections to Fullerton also, but he had land in the uh, Bellwood area, and Adeline was his mother, and she lived in the house right across from the ball diamond. Uh, the uh, Dan, your family, Dan's back here. Your family. Huh? Yeah, that, house, that big two-story house. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that was Adeline Sensenmaker's house at one time. I know, I was, I was uh, she owned a strip of land just to the south of her where the, where the trailer court is in Bellwood right now. And, uh, I wanted to buy that and make a trailer court in there. So I, I went to her one day and asked her if she was interested in selling it. She said, yes, I, I would. And uh, so I went to my grandpa and I said, Grandpa, I'd like to buy this land to Miss of Adeline's and start a trailer co court. And I said, how much does she want? I don't remember what it was, but anyway, he said, well, I'll back you up on it. So I went to Adeline and I said, Adeline, I want to buy that land. Oh, well, she said, I've raised the price now. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't buy that at the time, but Tiny Schultz was the electrician at the time, and so he bought it, and he had the equipment and the know-how, and he put in electrical on the grounds and everything. And then I ended up buying it from Tony, or uh, Tiny. Probably could have got a cheaper if I'd done it myself to begin with. <laughs> Now, are we, are we doing all right? We're doing fine. Okay, am I boring you to death? No. <laughs> Let's keep moving on, though. Can we, can I get the dates? No, we no. gotta really keep moving no, on. Oh, well, gee, you're shutting me off already. <laughs> <laughs> you're shutting me off already. Bill, Bill Smith building. Bill Smith. Bill, Bill. the Bill Smith building. <laughs> the picture that's up right now. Oh, Phil Smith. Uh, Phil Smith was related to uh, Mrs. Faye Smith. And it, he, he wasn't in business a long time. He had sold china, uh, clocks, <laughs> things like that, but not, not for many years. It looks like he had the post office at the back. Well, there were several times the post office, when they moved in from Patron, they would put them in the front of a store and, <coughs> and leave it there for two or three years and somebody else was next. And let me, let me tell you something about the post office that I remember. I, Joyce and I bought the Gunnarsson Drugstore during about five years before the Bellwood Centennial. And um, it had, had a canopy out in front before, but it was taken down, and I wanted it up for the Centennials, so I rebuilt that. And after the Centennial, I was tearing the, the post office, the drugstore building, down. And it was painted. There, there had been a time or two that I had heard about a post office being south of town. 
I never located that, never heard anything else about it. But when I was tearing the drugstore down, they, remember the little building they had a lot of them painted yellow? And this was painted yellow. And I took that yellow six inch siding off of that, and lo and behold, what did it say on the side of the building? Bellwood Post Office. <laughs> so whoever started that story was telling the truth, but I don't know anything about it. And I even took a picture of that, so I have proof. <laughs> uh, okay, what's the building here? This is the Bellwood Post Office owned by Phil Smith, the exterior of the building in 1897. What building was it? Post Office. Uh, owned by Phil. Huh? One that Phil Smith owned. Okay, it's still, still back to Phil's. It, it, it wasn't very, it's not a prominent part in the Bellwood. Well, let's go on then. <laughs> Again, another post office picture. <laughs> Henry Whitney. What, is this Whitney? Yeah. Yes. Uh, Henry Whitney. Any of you know where the uh, uh, guy six? Anyway, the the uh, Bohati kids. Anybody know the Bohatis? <laughs> uh, that was the Whitney house, it was just a block west, less than a block west of me and across the street. And it was a, was a very nice house. Henry Whitney lived there. He was a good businessman. He, he had a thigh proceed at one time. He tried to get across the Platte River Bridge that didn't hold him. Took his steam engine and Thrice machine, they went down the drink. But anyway, Henry raised uh, just one son that survived, and he, he was a rural mail carrier. And many of you had Alan Whitney yeah, delivering your mail. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, this is his dad and his dad's store. He didn't have the store for a long time, though. And, and uh, then when their children grew up, or what they had, they they had bedrooms upstairs, so they opened them up for school teachers. And school teachers, two or three school teachers lived in the separate bedrooms upstairs and would take their meals there. Okay. And, and, and I, I didn't know Mr. Uh, Whitney. Whitney, but I understand he was a nice, decent man, and uh, Somebody you can, we could be proud of. Green livestock. This, well, is, this is, we don't want to dwell too much here. So there was, there was two, two or three lumber yards in, in the years. And, and uh, uh, they, all these houses, they had, they had 400 houses. Take a lot of lumber to build those, I think. So it must have been good business. <laughs> What? The blacksmith. Oh yeah, I like this one. <laughs> his, his, his second name was uh, Joe. Uh, Joe. Joe. His last name was Bach. Joe Bach. And you know that in Bellwood, the house where Paul Biker still owns, it's empty right now. It's right across from the Casper home just a block, half a block east of Main Street. Um, Joe lived there in that house, and he had a blacksmith on the southwest corner. And when, when Dad decided to stop working for the state and come back and farm, why? A fellow by the name of Joe Bach who was farming his our farm, and by Dad's agreement, and I think that was the blacksmith's son. His name is Joe too, and uh, so Dad, Dad gave him his notice. He said uh, that family moved to David City, and I think. Uh, 
I, I don't know how long ago his, his father operated the, the blacksmith, but they say he was one of the better blacksmiths in, in the county. Okay, now, I talked about the, the bank. When, when my grandmother built the corner of the bank with the door in the corner, that's this one right here. That was the, the first brick building, no, the first brick bank in Bellwood in uh, 1903. Now, in the background over here, you can see a roof up there. That, that is part of the roof of that hotel that there, the, uh, the, uh... Blake? Derby? No, was it the Blake? No, no, no. Um, was it the Derby? Did you say Dale? Dale. Dale? Dale. Dale, Dale, Dale Hotel. That's, uh, that's what that roof is. And then here, here's the post office before it got moved. And that bank of, was added to that, that brick vault was added on to make, make it foolproof. But it wasn't forgery proof. <laughs> and, and then the, here, the grocery stores are in here, and, and Mansell's Cafe right in here. And I, the Mansell's Cafe, I, I, I went down and talked to Peg here a couple times, and uh, I was kind of confused because with the Mansfields and, and the the Napiers, who were they? How? What was the arrangement there? Well, uh, Peg's dad was, uh, help me, Peg. Uh, brother to Vera, who made your, and she married Fred Mansfield. Now, yeah, you're, 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 no, you're, you're, you're a Napier in the family name. The man. I thought Fred was Mansfield. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, no. No, they were they weren't the very first owners. It was your family's. Oh, Lula had a cafe. Lula and her brother. Yeah. What was his name? Well, anyway, uh, I don't know. there was about there was five, six, seven Mansfield boy, uh, Napier boys, and. He's never seen a family, fam, a family like the Napier. Everyone has a nickname. <laughs> and if you don't know him, you're going to get in trouble fast, like I am right now. <laughs> but anyway, him and, uh, and, and his sister owned the Mansell Cafe. They bought it from Mr. Peck. And the Peck is a long time <laughs> name in Bellwood. And they had a confectionery store for for 15, 16, 18 years. And, and then they, Peck sold it to Peg's family. And then the girl, Lula, married, married Fred Mansfield. Well, then that brought Mansfield into the business by marriage. Because she's, he, they're married now, man and wife. So now there's two Mansfields and, and two, two Napiers and one Mansfield. And, uh, don't shake your head at me, Harry. I mean, Brian. I never shake my head. Oh, I never. I'm trying my best. You're, and, uh, you're doing a heck of a lot better than I could. I can tell you that. Yeah. I, one thing I was, I am confused about. I think I mentioned it. Well, I mentioned it to your dad yesterday, two days ago. That maybe he told you. A, a, a news clip that I had that said that the Mansfields lived upstairs in the east side. And when they both died, their son moved up there and ran the business for a while. Well, I, I never knew a restaurant on the east side in Bellwood that had an upstairs. So, so some of these things that you, you, if you people know the answer, I'd like to know. But anyway, this, uh, when, when you deal with a little town like this, and that's my years, uh, things get mixed up once in a while, I guess. Okay, now. Let's uh, go to the east side. Now we're on the 
east side. Now here, here's here's the Bellwood store, Grapple's dry goods store. Had as many as seven clerks at one time. And uh, this one right here, right? The right, right here. Yeah. Yep. 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 And these two buildings here, are brick, <coughs> brick, were built by the Hudson family down towards uh, Maria. And the father had half of the North Building, all of the North Building, and it was a furniture store. And the next one was his son, uh, which was a dry goods store. They were both brick, and then when, when Didier was expanding, they, they bought the, the building that was right next to that, and then added on to that. Now, the, the, these are the, the stores here, somewhere here, there weren't as many. Uh, this one it was the Seltzer store. It was a hardware store eventually. It was a pretty big building. Now, here's, the, here's part of the electrical generation system. You see this building here? If you can see, there's a number eight up there. I don't know what that eight is. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, in the in late, eight, late 1800s, Bell and, uh, and Joyce's story, she wrote, they had a settling gas generator. And I have part of that generator on the farm right now. Now you're not working. <laughs> and, uh, and they used that until... 1907, and then they they wanted made more generation, so they, they poured a slab of cement in here and put up a frame building and have a, a generator, a regular electrical 110 volt generation system there. That operated from 1907 to 1915, and caught fire and burnt to the ground. Then, then power, smaller power companies, commercial, commercial power companies started coming, coming in. Now, uh, I want to, I want to comment. Uh, I wanted the time. I was, I was chairman of the Bellwood Centennial, and I wanted after it was over, I wanted to build a, a uh, time capsule. And so I started. I, I drew the preliminary plans I wanted. One of them, I sent them to Dave Barrier from Bellwood, and he, he actually drew up working designs for me to use. I started digging the footings down there. Down about six, eight inches, I hit concrete. I went, what in the heck? I didn't know there was any concrete down there in this time of the year, or any, down there anywhere. And uh, I, I kept working her south, and I got about a foot, foot and a half, and I got her out of it. Well, I was getting, I was hitting the floor of that generator that burned down, and I was just a little bit too far north. So I just, I just moved everything a foot and a half north, and then I was okay. And by the way, the time capsule is to be opened at the 150th anniversary of Bellwood, and that's in 2030. And we're only six, seven years away. So we're, we're, we're starting to trying to need to get things moving pretty quick because it'll take some some articles and some things. Bob Bell, this is Kenny Evil. I work with Bob all the time with that time capsule. And we had to end the time. Our form, we started pouring it, and our form started giving us buckets. <laughs> Kenny's talking about your forms giving way as you were pouring it. I have to talk to Abe Barron about that one. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, I'm glad you're here. You know, Kenny w lived north of me. And when I was starting freshman in high school, Kenny was uh, 11th or 12th grade, and he'd drive right by with his own car. And so I got him. He started stopping and picking me up, too. I, <laughs> I rode to school with Kenny. Thanks, Kenny. <laughs> but I, I never did pay you for that. <laughs> oh.
I want to tell you one, one little short story. The, the antique dealership in Columbus called me about five, six years ago. They said, Bob, we got something over here you want. You better come over. So I went over there the next day, and they had a, a very beautiful gas oil lamp, oil lamp, colored glass with a big chimney on top. And on the bottom, upside down, was the label, Bell General Store. It was, it was a sticker that Grandpa put on his merchandise in the store. And boy, th that's under safe. <laughs> now that, that one I want to save. Okay. Uh, that's one of the plays that was up in the opera house. Okay, let's move on. Mm -hmm. Thresh it's a threshing crew. Johnny, Johnny Jack Farm. Big head. Bellwood Band. Yeah, Bellwood in the North Park had a bandstand, and, and the fire department was very active in music and parades and things back in those days. So they had uh, musicians in the department that played different instruments. Uh, they had uh, a, a day or celebration or two in the summertime where they did uh, parades in town, music, dancing. It was a pretty active place during the summer. It's the first school building. Okay. Now, here's the school building. It was built in 18, 1895, the bell tower. In 1915, lightning hit the bell tower. And, and the top, but did not damage, did not damage the uh, bell at all. Now, Mrs. Andrews taught the third, fourth, and fifth in the south room. Mrs. Cook taught the fifth, sixth, and seventh. Six, seven, eight. Six, seven, eight. Six, seven, eight. And the high school was upstairs in two or three rooms there. Now, that, that. Sorry. That uh, school back in those days didn't have restrooms, had an outhouse out back, three or four or five holder, and uh, the gymnasium, we talked about that, wood for that. Uh, it was, the gym was, heat, was heated by two potbelly stoves, one in the northwest corner, one in the southeast corner, and uh, Little fence cut it off so it didn't answer with the basketball, basketball plant. And uh, they burned a lot of coal. Okay. Oh, I want to back up one, one thing. You don't need to do a picture. Uh, this is a public announcement. First one has to be made. Use your mic. You got to be in the mic. Use your mic. Nobody hears you unless you're in the mic. I'm sorry. It's okay. Public announcement. This is official. I'm the chairman of the committee. That has been formed of about three or four of us. But Jack Seltzer bought the school bell, bell that came out of that tower when it was sold in, in the 1960s. And Jack has kept it in storage all these years. And he has, he has put me in charge of it. He, uh, my agreement, our, uh, our hopes are the same. And uh, Nancy is working with us. But we are officially starting now to, to mount that bell someplace in the front of the Bellwood School, right on the end of the day. It, it will be mounted there and some kind of yet to be designed. And we may utilize the school shop for some of the work. But in the next year or so, yeah, I, and I don't know how we're going to finance, finance it, but I think we can keep the cost down. But that should be an upcoming uh, achievement for the school. Now, uh, where's my sack? I got something. I got something special here I want to tell you people. 
There's one very, very proud person in this gym tonight. But in 1934, Bell won the Class B Nebraska State Basketball Championship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, and the, the trophy is on display in Ballard School. And when and Bob Rarick was a member of that basketball team, Lloyd Kamensky, uh, Hosier, there was a, there was a Kreisinger, there was, there was, there are. Stemper, Right one. Yeah. Here's here's the Kamensky. Uh, here's Bob Rory. This is this is the coach Garrett. Here's Tom Anderson. You want to hear a joke about it, Tom? Sure. Garrett looked over to Tom and he says, "Tom, get in there for so and so." So Tom jumped up, took his sweatpants off, and lo and behold, he put he forgot to put his shorts on. <laughs> and, and he was he was standing there in his jump strap. At least he had that on. <laughs> now when when Bob passed away, what was it? Ninety-seven passed. Yeah, up to the mic, Dad. He died in 13. <coughs> died in 1913. 2013. This is, this is Pat Rarick Mick. And Bob was her dad. And her husband has passed away now. But I, Pat was cleaning out his, his things, and she could run across his basketball suit. And this is it right here. Oh, wow. this, this is the actual basketball suit that Bob was wearing. And, and we're going to try to, I've talked to Mr. Danker, the principal of David City, and we're going to try to incorporate it into a display around the trophy at the Bellwood School. Pat, we're happy. I might add too that Bob, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Bob was selected as the outstanding athlete for that tournament. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay, good deal. Now, I don't know, I don't know who this is. This is a, 1920s, this is a 1927 women's ball. Program. Okay, well, that's just about, it's just about the end. Getting close. Yes, one or two years away. I don't know. Okay, Tina. How are we doing, Tina? Are you kicking me out? Yeah. Well, we're 15 minutes over time, but you keep going. If you got to go, go. But we want to hear what you have to say, Bob. Okay. I'm a little concerned about the mic. <coughs> I'm not really helping it very much. No, you're fine. Okay. I touched it. I'm magic. It's all yeah. It's good. Okay, let's change pictures then. Okay. Oh, this is uh, Bellwood Homecoming Royalty. Do you guys recognize anybody? Yes. You want to tell who it is? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> I might not be with one of them that night. Uh, it's an awful pretty girl in that one. Joyce is on the end. Right here? Yes. Yeah, that's Joyce. Bob's wife, right here. I have Jim Napier. Okay, now, now. Uh, there's two brothers in there. Two brothers? Yeah, Dean and Keith. Joyce had a lot of brothers, and unfortunately, every one of them has passed on now. But they, they were all good sport athletes, played football and basketball. Now, uh, 
baseball team of uh, Coastal Coastal Carolina. He's a pitcher and he when he's uh, got his uniform he wrangled to him. He's wearing number 33. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well here are some of the businesses in Bellwood. Old pictures. Hex. 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 I think I went through too many of them. That's okay. Yeah, auto sell. Yeah, this is auto sell, sir. Whitney's. Henry Whitney. Oh, yeah, that was it. Johnny Adams. When we changed, when we changed our formula here, we forgot this one. Bellwood we, we originally had freight service back, back when. Had a steam, they were steam engines, and, and they went from Lincoln to Columbus and back, and they um, had to, they couldn't use certain engines because some of them were too big for the wood bridge, but uh, they they got loaded coal and water in Columbus, coal and water in David City, and then Lincoln and then vice versa, but we had a motor train. And uh, my dates, I had all these dates down when those things started. But the motor train was uh, augmented the freight steam engine. It was basically a freight hauler. And uh, the uh, motor train was a one unit system. It had the engineer up front, and then right behind it was the engine. And then the next compartment was the freight. They hauled a lot of cream and milk out. And then the last compartment was the passenger compartment. And I used to write, uh, I, I, at that time I was living in Lincoln and uh, dad worked for the state. And I, uh, during the summer, not during the school year, but during the summertime, I come to Grandma and Grandpa's quite often and stay for a week or two. So I rode the motor train quite a, quite a while and uh, really enjoyed it. I'd, I'd, I'd be watching, uh, looking at the stand by the depot and looking south up to the hill. There she comes around the curve. <laughs> and we, we knew what, how many minutes it'd take it to get there then. You forgot about Johnny. Oh yeah, Johnny. Now Johnny, Johnny Adams pushed the mail cart. It was a, a Mormon type mail cart. Had the handle in the back, two wheels, and he would pick up, the, uh, the, be at the post office and build early, get the mail that was going to Lincoln, David City, or any location south, and he would push the steel wheel cart down to the depot, meet the train, unload the freight for a south, load the freight that was coming in, the mail particularly he was on, mail coming in from Columbus, and push it back to the post office. Now, uh, sometime during his career, they snitched that two-wheel, steel-wheel trailer away from him when he wasn't looking and took those steel wheels off and put 
two brand new rubber air tires on that. <laughs> and old John was just like in heaven. <laughs> just, just like a little boy with a new toy. And I think that cart's around someplace. I haven't located it. Kenny, you know anything about it? No, he doesn't need it. Well, some, sometime he'll find it'll pop up like a school bill did. Brian Wilson might have it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? Brian Wilson might have it. <laughs> well, I'll talk to him too. <laughs> My lips are sealed, Bob. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, now here, here's the Bella Gazette 50th anniversary picket, ticket picture. These are all the businessmen in Bellwood at the 50-year mark. Mm -hmm. That's what this number is. Oh, now, I, 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 I'm done with my list. I, I you know, I have, there's, there's, there's a couple things that concern me. My grandpa's taught me everything I know about Bellwood. And he was the only one here living that did. Now he's gone. Now I'm the only one. I, I don't think anybody knows as much as I do about it. I have hundreds of notes that I wrote down. Everything I've told you is all, most of it's up here. And I have some of my family members here, and there's gonna be some uh, tapes or videos or something available. I got some brothers in California that want some. So I'm, I'm gonna get the word out because I want to, I'm proud of, this, of Bellwood and, and its history. And I want the story to go on. And I know that it, it'll, it was going to decrease and, and someplace it's going to stop. But I'd like to keep it going as long as we possibly can. And all these other towns are going to, they, I told you I was just a guinea pig, but all these other towns are going to get their chance too. And I'm going to try to come to as many of those as I can because I want to learn about their town too. And, and Gina's going to have a part in, in some of those. Um, what? You think you're at a stopping place? I, Do you think you're at a stopping place? I think, no, no, I probably forgot something. <laughs> 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 Thank you, folks, and uh, you'll agree with me now, I'm not a speaker. <laughs> Maybe if I was 30, 40 years older, I'd have been better. But, uh, or uh, not older, younger, I'd have, been, <laughs> I'd have been, yeah, I'd like to be around here 30 years. I could have probably done a lot better job. But um, history is an important thing. Not only to me, but to every one of you, your farm, your town, your family. That's what this country is made of, is, is history. And uh, so do what you can to help this group grow and, and uh, get bigger. And they're thinking of trying to do some expansion in, in f facilities. So they need, they need our help. Let's jump in and help him as much as we can. Does anybody yeah. have any questions for Bob real quick? Why, who started the island in downtown Bellwood with the trees and like the park? Because that's the only town that I know of that has that. Okay, the three parks in town were, were in the original city map. Grandpa plan, planned on them. They're, they're 50 feet wider and uh, is, is, is pretty detailed on how they plan. And there are some, some of his trees are still growing in that park. The, the middle park has two sycamore trees that he planted. The north park has one uh, catalpa tree. And then the south park has about eight or nine catalpa trees. Those are all planted. In, in the in the, before it, Grandpa died, great Grandpa died, uh, and so uh, they're and they're all about seventy five feet tall. So they're gonna be there a while. I 
think if you have any more questions, real quick. I'm curious, is that grand piano still in the upstairs or the middle place? Is the no. grand piano still It's still in the house, upstairs. but it's now on the main floor. Okay, on the main floor. Yes. What is it? Uh, what, about the what year did they put the cupola oh, on the... Oh, yes. You, you know, that's a pain in the... What, you know what. <laughs> Are you interested in it? Because <laughs> I'd love to get it out. <laughs> who, who asked that question? Right here, this gentleman here. What's your name? Gene. Gene Stupinchek. Okay, afterwards, I'll get together. I'll give you a little brief story. He'll tell you a story about that when we're done here. Y'all, thank you so much for coming. I appreciate it so much. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think we can look forward to a lot more stories just like this, you guys, coming up can every you, month. Let me make a comment there. Uh, that, that was Jasper's farm. Uh, Jasper was Jesse's brother, yeah, and he, he owned that farm still. His, his descendants own it now today. And uh, they've been on there a long, long time. And I, I want to say the same thing about Gina's family. Gina's, the, the Bell Farm, the main farm, was farmed was farmed by uh, the Kamensky family. Frank Kamensky came there in 1901 or 1902. And they farmed it for Grandpa until 1950, 51. For 50 years they farmed it. Frank had three sons, Ed, Chris, and Lloyd. And they were all involved in the farm. Then when they left, Gina's, Gina's dad and, his, and her brother took over the farm. And they farmed it, I don't know how to be exact, 20 some years. So it's really been just two tenants until the Huff family recently. Okay, well, I think you're probably getting more tired than you realize, Bob. Yeah, we're going to wrap this up so people can go home. So. Thank, you. Thank you very much for coming, folks. Please come in February. I have lots of fun stories I can tell. Like the boys go, when you get three domestic boys and three bell boys, six of them, Getting up on a water tower and jumping off of parachutes and things like that. <laughs> and get some pretty good stuff.